Hello, Africa, and welcome to another episode of African Students' Voices on AU TV. We are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities, Accra, Ghana. I'm your host, Ajibola Chudaku. You can follow us on our social media handles, AAU underscore 67 on Twitter, Association of African Universities on YouTube and Facebook. And for more content for our programs, you can visit our dedicated website, tv.aau.org. Today, we'll be discussing the influence of personality awareness on students' career choices. I know you can't wait to hear what we have to say, but before we get to the discussion, we'll go for a quick pause. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. The Association of African Universities, in partnership with the All African Students' Union and Al Azhar University, Egypt, calls on African universities to participate in the first African Universities Olympics. Theme, uniting African universities through sports and recreation, mapping out strategies to achieve the Africa we want. The disciplines include basketball, football, long jump, triple jump, shot put, javelin, sprints, and a whole lot more. The teams will be formed according to the five geopolitical regions of Africa, namely West, East, South, North, and Central Africa. Venue, Al Azhar University, Cairo, Egypt. Date, 14th to 18th of March, 2019. Register now on blog.aau.org and also stand the chance of visiting the pyramids of Giza and other interesting sites in Cairo. For more information, visit blog.aau.org or call plus 233-2432-98464. Welcome back to your favorite show, African Student Voices. And we're discussing the topic, the influence of personality on students' career choices. And I have with me here in the studio, and as two psychologists, a member of the Ghana Psychological Association in the name of Dr. Bedu Ajiman. Nice meeting you. Great. Ajiman. Dr. Collins Bedu Ajiman is the National Vice President of Ghana Psychological Association. He is an author, he's a lecturer, entrepreneur, he is an um, alliances industrial psychologist, and a visiting lecturer to the University of South Florida. We're so glad to have you here, Doc. I'm very grateful Great. to be here. Thank you to so talk much. To all your students. Thank you. So we have the entire African student body watching us today, and they can't wait to know more about their personality and how it affects them to make the best of career choices. And you being a psychologist with your experience in academia, I want to ask, as a student, we are poised, we are encouraged to do our best and get the right job that can take care of us in terms of salary and the best of cash. So when does the issue of personality come in in choosing a career? Well, um, I just want to commend AUC, AAU for this fine initiative. Thank you. Um, if you look at the media landscape, it looks as if we don't have specific media outlet dedicated to students. And so I think this is a laudable idea. Um, when I got a call and when I do follow through with some of the interviews you've done. I think this is something that we need to commend you and you. the management of AAU for doing such a great job. And I must say, for cash, it's difficult to get, <laughs> as you mentioned. Um, many students, once they start their four-year bachelor's education, they may be aiming at what they will get at the end of the day, um, whether they will have the best of prospects in terms of um, work-wise, whether they will have what they dream in terms of their dream job that will give them all the benefits that work can bring. Yeah. And personality is a very dicey subject, even among psychologists. But I must say, it's something, no matter what we do, we can never leave it. So for the purposes of helping our audience appreciate our discussion, I may have to explain what personality is. Then we will link it up to what a career choice is okay. and what relationship exists between these two and whether um, having a particular personality trait predisposes you to have a particular 
um, career option. Very well. So let me begin with my own thematic areas in my head. Sure. If we talk of personality, it's simple. Every individual is born with some distinctive characteristics or features. And we psychologists believe that these distinctive traits or features or characteristics are relatively stable. So that does not mean it's entirely permanent. And so that is one thing that we should make it clear. And when we say it's relatively stable, it means it has two influencing factors. Many psychologists argue that personality is inborn. So if you are born, the very day you are born to your parents, there are some enduring personality characteristics okay. that are enduring, and those ones are inborn. But there is another side of the argument that indeed these distinctive characteristics can also be acquired through the environment. And so there are two sides when we want to talk about personality, how someone is the distinctive features of an individual. So that is how we should understand personality to be. And now if you look at the second strand of what I mentioned, career choice. Who do I become after a four-year study? Yes. Who do I become if I pursue this particular program? What kind of job can I do? Occupation, profession can I pursue? Those are the choices that are available to all students. So the question now is, given a particular personality, can this influence the type of job I may engage myself in? Or can this influence the type of job I may decide to pursue? And in trying to understand these two relationships, one of the key things I need to mention is that there's a gentleman by name John Holland, and he has done a fantastic job trying to classify different, different individuals into six different personality types and how they relate to the kind of career they may decide to pursue. And the foremost one that perhaps I can talk about is artistic. So depending on your personality, some people may do well in areas that has to do with art. For instance, the music industry. Someone may be an, um, someone who just draw people. They, they like scenery things. Yeah. There are others who are also realistic. And these ones, they call a spade a spade. So if you are classified as artistic, you may be inclined toward creative things. If you are realistic, then you want to be sure things are done the right way in that order. So for instance, someone who pays so much attention into detail may be categorized as to this. So jobs that require paying so much attention into detail may be categorized as coming under the personality trait of what? Those realistic. who are realistic. We also have some who are social. These ones will want to work with people. They want to always be at where there is action. They want to always interact with others. And that is what satisfies them. And so think of nurses. Think of teachers or lecturers. These are people who deal with others. All these counselors, these could be categorized as having a social personality trait. And this lends support to the kind of jobs that they do. We also have others who may be investigative. And so talking about investigative, I'm sure you are thinking of the security industry, the security services, intelligence services. These ones indeed want to find out more. They become very curious. And these ones are more likely to engage themselves in such work-related roles. We have some who may be conventional. So for them, their interest is to look at how things are done and whether they can add value to it, add input to it. And so if you look at holistically, later I'm sure our audience can just have a look at Holland's uh, um, personality test and how it ripples on the kind of um, career choice someone pursues. There's a strong link. Research, psychological research has actually cemented. Depending on your personality, you can fit yourself into a career that matches your personality. But one thing I must also say, it is not only personality that determines the best career someone may pursue. Sometimes it could also be interest. It could be the values. It could be the aptitude that these ones have. So apart from personality, there are other influencing factors 
that determines the kind of choice one makes as far as an occupation, a profession, or a job choice is concerned. Personality, the interest the person has. We have also the values of the person. Depending on, let's say, your religious inclination, you may decide not to do certain jobs. And then also the aptitude, whether indeed you have the right yearning for a particular job. These are four key things that defines why someone may decide to take a particular career or otherwise. Interesting, Doc. Yeah. How about your, one's skills and abilities? Uh, we, we've been asked to believe that we can do everything in this world, so I can be everything I want to be in this world, regardless of my skills and abilities. How are those factors able to propel me in choosing a career? Well, I, I must say, I like what you just said. We can do everything. Well, like I said, personality, some argue, is inborn. Some say the environment can shape you to become a particular person. And so depending on where you stand, you may argue differently. So yes, you can do everything when you are given the right environment to some reasonable extent. You can do certain things. We psychologists believe that when it comes to personality, it's just like a dog. All dogs can be taught new tricks. So there could be subtle modifications as far as one's personality is concerned. So what that means is that the environment, the kind of exposure one gets, the kind of training one gets, can actually cause a modification into one's personality. And for that matter, influencing the person's career choice. And that is something we need to remember. What that means is that learning is an influential part when it comes to career choice. So qualification may be good, but training can add value. Training can actually fit someone into a particular occupation. And that is also another valuable bit. And that is where skills and abilities combine. So the abilities possibly, someone may argue, may be inborn. But you can also acquire the skills through the environment. So we realize that the two key argument that influences personality, whether it's inborn, instinctive, or whether if indeed one is shaped by the environment comes to play. So your abilities, your natural abilities may be there, but you could also acquire skills through training. And that is why most employers may be interested in the qualification one may have. Some may also do personality assessment to find out who really the person is as far as his inborn traits are concerned or possibly acquired traits are concerned. So all these combines and give you a better feel as to what career you should pursue. Amazingly. Um, and it's inevitable that we should tell everyone's interest in terms of your strength and your weaknesses. Yeah. We've all got strengths and weaknesses. But if you have to tell how, what are they, it is hard to tell. Students mostly find it very difficult to tell what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. As a psychologist, if you were to advise on how a student can sit and assess their strengths and weaknesses, what do you think will be some of the techniques to go about in doing that? Well, I, I, Ajumana, I must say that is a bit complex. And especially in our part of the world we live in, it's difficult to have access to psychologists to assist us with what career options one may pursue. What I have realized in most, especially public universities, we may have a counseling unit, but we stock the counseling unit with reverends and pastors, and all they do is they keep praying. It is not wrong to have these ones if the university so decide. But the point is, we need to also see the relevance of a trained, licensed professional in this case, a psychologist, to assist these young ones we are training at the various tertiary institutions, how they can identify their inclinations, how they can see the affinity where they lean toward as far as job choices or career choices are concerned. And so this is an appeal. We can do it. We can help students. We have already existing um, career centers and others in some of the universities. We shouldn't only stop them with Reverend Fathers who prays only in the afternoons or in the evenings. We should also incorporate psychologists 
these are trained professionals. They have the assessment tools to test different, different students and depending on their leanings, then they'll be able to tell them from the assessment, these are some of the careers that you can think of per se. It becomes a guide, it becomes a help. So right from the word go, these students begin to see themselves in that particular what arena. They work toward it. They begin to find mentors around those leanings and they work to model after these mentors. And that is one area. And we do have consultants, psychologists in Ghana. You could also contact them. Even if you Google, I'm sure, you are likely to find some psychologists. You can get to them and these ones will help you to assess you and tell you very likely what career choice you may possibly engage in that will help you depending on the kind of personality traits that indeed are loaded on these assessment skills. So these are the closest options that we can have as far as helping students to find out what they can be in the future. Oh, great. So if you just joined us, it's African Student Voices and we're discussing the influence of personality and all your interests, all the other parts, things that affect your personality. How can it affect your career choice with students as our focus? I know you just joined us and it's getting interesting here. Be right back. Botswana Accountancy College is a business school that was set up over two decades ago to contribute towards the human capital development in Botswana and beyond. BAC has over 20 years diversified its product portfolio to offer accounting, business, leisure, management and ICT related programs at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, as well as consultancy short courses to augment professional skills. In achieving this diversification, the college has partnered with UK-based universities of Durban Sunderland and Sheffield Hallam University, as well as professional bodies such as SEMA, Beaker, AAT, ACCA, CIA, Cisco, Microsoft, SAP, ESA, and SIPS to allow our graduates to have a globally recognized qualification and be globally competitive. To learn more about BAC, contact us on 3953062 in Gaborone or 2410558 in Francistown or visit our website on www.bac.ac. Also, you can visit our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. BAC, celebrating over 20 years of creating business leaders. Hello, welcome back. If you just joined us, it is African Student Voices, and we're discussing the influence of personality on the career choices of students. And with me in the studio is Dr. Collins Bedouajiban, and the conversation, the discussion is getting better and better. So, Doc, in advance, to what extent can one's previous job experience, let's say a student goes for internship or does more volunteer jobs, how, to what extent does those activities lead them to the right career choice? Well, I think um, that is a very fine question. And I know many students now will want to have that competitive advantage. And I must say experience is key. Research has actually indicated that students who attend seminars conferences, do internships, they are more likely to be offered opportunities of jobs compared to those who do not. So I commend some institutions. Um, I know a number of institutions do carry out internship. It's actually part of their um, framework for scoring and graduating students, which is good. And I must say that it, it does these students good. They learn on the job training. They get to know what happens out there. So beyond the classroom, they are able to see the realities. So if they studied organizational behavior, if they studied organizational politics, if they studied how managers manage these organizations, once they get there, they get the opportunity to have a proper feel. And that is very good. So experience counts. And it also affords them the opportunity to socially network. And I always say to students, whenever I meet them, but there is one letter difference between not working and networking. And obviously, once you attend conferences, seminars, you go for these internships, you get the opportunity to network. You get to know CEOs, managers. The organization may organize programs. You get the opportunity to meet new ones. And once you meet these new ones, you take their call cards, you follow up. There and there, you can send a quick mail so that you just try to mention where you met what you said about the person, what the person said that was interesting and all that. 
These are all things students gather as experiences. It helps them once they begin to work after their training. Indeed, a great difference between networking and not working. That's exactly. a key point we have to note out yeah. there. Yeah. So someone's life, he has played um, regular roles. Yeah. I say, taking back to their infancy, they've been very open, they've been very social, some have been very inward. With all these traits, from your infancy to your adulthood, can these traits also, in a way, affect the way you choose a career, since you are a bit inward, or an introvert, or an extrovert? Well, it boils down to environment. So imagine if you are raised in a particular vicinity, for instance, imagine I am raised in an area where yeah, survival of the fittest. Obviously, you grow up becoming very outgoing, very strong, assertive. That can influence your choice of career. So the environment has shaped you a particular way. If you are also born in a particular environment whereby a prize on keeping things to yourself and all that, it can also shape what you may want to become. And so that is a relevant part. Depending on the kind of exposure training you get, that can influence who you become and the kinds of choices that you make. It's the same as one's religious inclination shaping the person to accept a particular job or pursue a particular career. So these are environmental factors that strongly can influence one's career choice. In your view, uh, taking a classroom setting, yes. we've got students who are open, they are naturally born talkatives. Yeah. We have others too who are quite reserved yeah. due to their environmental setting. They, yeah. they grew to be reserved. But there's a perception that those reserved students are much more intelligent. They are much more realist. They are much more faster and smarter in the, in the brain than those who talk and are much more sociable. How do you, how do you see this? Uh, perception well, I'm, I'm very happy you said it's a perception. And in terms of personality, some may be introverts. As you mentioned, they are very reserved, they are quiet, uh, they don't make so much noise. And some may also be outgoing, but those ones are there. But I don't think there is a clear link in terms of research indicating that depending on who you are, you are more likely to be intelligent or not. There are others who may be very talkative, but may also be good. These ones who may be talkative may be good in presentations. So it depends on the mode of assessment. If the mode of assessment is to award, let's say, a majority of the assessment marks from presentations, these ones who are talkative, very likely, you should expect, they will be able to join words together, analogies and all that, and score all the marks. So depending on the mode, but there aren't any clear cut research arguing that indeed, when you are introvert or extrovert, one is more intelligent than the other. These are perceptions. People do say that. But in terms of what defines one's intelligence, a number of factors contribute to that. And I don't think this is the right platform to discuss intelligence. Otherwise, we will not even have time to complete discussing personality and how it influences career choice. Very well, Doc. So uh, if you were to recommend or give an advice to a student's body watching us today all over Africa on how to consider, on how serious to take personality, in some, in some brief statements, on to what extent can personality play in their future career choice? All right, that is very fine. So I'm looking at them now. I think my fair foremost counsel will go to AAU. It's a fine initiative. This television program reaches all African students within the continent. And so I will encourage AAU to encourage all affiliated universities to have a career and counseling center. And they should encourage the hiring of psychologists and counselors. The psychologists can help when it comes to using these assessment so that they can assist these students as to what career choices they can make. In terms of these students, from what we have said, we may have our inborn traits. The environment can also add value to it. The environment also shapes us. So what I can say is that we need to build social capital. If we have the opportunity for internship, we need to make use of it. That will develop the KSAOs, that is the knowledge, the skills, the abilities, and other characteristics that are necessary for making selection decisions. These are the things as IO psychologists, if we are to make hiring or selection decisions, we do consider. 
And so personality is important, but there are other factors that are equally relevant. And we need to just oppose all these, train ourselves with them, avail ourselves to these conferences, seminars, internships, so we can have a complete, holistic skill set, ready prepared for the market. There you have it. It's been amazing here with Dr. Collins Beduajeman on all students, how we can consider our personality and how it affects us in our career choices. We've had a great show and I believe you did so. Keep watching AU TV and see you next time.